The Model 428 freezer is designed to produce iced cappuccino and smoothie product at the desired thickness. We begin our instructions at the point where we enter the store in the morning and find the parts disassembled and laid out to air dry from the previous night's brush cleaning. These opening procedures will show you how to assemble these parts into the freezer, sanitize them, and prime the freezer with fresh mix in preparation to serve your first portion. Then we'll show closing procedures, disassembly, rinsing and cleaning of the unit in preparation for the next day's use. For further instructions, refer to your operator's manual. Assembly. When lubricating parts, use an approved food grade lubricant, for example, Taylor Lube. Make sure the power switch is in the off position. Failure to follow this instruction may result in personal injury. Slide the boot seal onto the drive shaft and then install the O-ring onto the shaft. Squeeze the boot seal so that each side forms a cup. Fill the sides with lube and then distribute the lube evenly around the shaft. Lubricate around the rest of the shaft and the O-ring. Do not lubricate the square end of the drive shaft. To ensure that the mix does not leak out of the back of the freezing cylinder, the middle section of the boot seal should be convex or extend out from the seal. If the middle section of the boot seal is concave or extending into the middle of the seal, invert the seal. Insert the drive shaft into the rear shell bearing and engage the square end firmly into the female socket of the drive unit. Be certain that the drive shaft fits into the drive coupling without binding. Check the scraper blades for any nicks or signs of wear. If any nicks are present or if either blade is worn, replace both blades. Place the rear scraper blade over the rear holding pin with the knife edge to the outside. Holding the blade on the beater, turn it over and install the front blade the same way. Holding the blades in position, insert the beater assembly into the freezing cylinder and slide the assembly into position over the drive shaft. Turn the beater slightly to be certain that the beater is properly seated. When in position, the beater will not protrude beyond the front of the freezing cylinder. Install the white plastic guide bearing on the short end of the torque rotor. Slide the O-ring into the groove on the long end of the torque rotor and lubricate the O-ring. Do not lubricate the guide bearing. Insert the torque rotor with the guide bearing end into the pilot hole in the center of the drive shaft. The hole in the torque rotor shaft should be rotated to the 12 o'clock position. Install the O-rings on the draw valve and lubricate. Insert the draw valve into the door. Rotate the draw valve so the flats on the top of the draw valve are perpendicular to the door face. Insert the ice buster through the door spout and into the slot located just above the lower O-ring. Rotate the draw valve to allow installation of the draw handle. This will lock the ice buster in place. Install the draw handle and pin, and then close the draw valve by moving the handle to the left. Place the O-ring onto the prime plug. Screw the prime plug into position on the front of the door. Place the rounded side of the large rubber gasket into the groove on the back side of the freezer door. If the door gasket is incorrectly installed, mix can leak from the freezing cylinder. Slide the white plastic front bearing onto the bearing hub, making certain that the flanged end of the bearing is resting against the freezer door. Position the freezer door on the four studs on the front of the freezing cylinder. Install the hand screws, tightening them equally in a crisscross pattern to ensure the door is snug. Do not over-tighten the screws. Position the torque arm by inserting it through the slot in the torque switch arm and down into the hole in the torque rotor, which protrudes from the door. Verify proper installation by moving the torque rotor back and forth 
to make sure it moves freely and easily. Slide the long drip pan into the hole in the front panel. Install the front drip tray and splash shield beneath the door spout. Sanitizing. Prepare an approved 100 ppm sanitizing solution. Use warm water and follow the manufacturer's specifications. Remove the hopper cover and pour the sanitizing solution into the hopper, allowing it to flow into the freezing cylinder. While the solution is flowing into the freezing cylinder, brush clean the mix hopper and the mix inlet hole. Place the power switch in the wash position. This will agitate the sanitizing solution in the freezing cylinder. Allow the solution to agitate for five minutes. Place an empty mix pail beneath the door spout and move the draw handle to the right to draw off all the sanitizing solution. When the sanitizer stops flowing from the door spout, move the draw handle to the left and place the power switch in the off position. Priming. Fill the hopper with fresh product and allow it to flow into the freezing cylinder. This will force out any remaining sanitizing solution. With a mix pail beneath the door spout, open the draw valve. When full strength product is flowing from the door spout, close the draw valve. Open the prime plug by turning it counterclockwise until the air in the freezing cylinder is allowed to escape. When product rises to the bleed port, close the prime plug by turning it clockwise until it is snug against the freezer door. Place the power switch in the auto position. When the unit cycles off, the product will be at serving viscosity. The viscosity or thickness of the product can be adjusted by turning the viscosity adjustment screw on the upper right side under the display light. Turn the viscosity adjustment screw clockwise for a thicker product or counterclockwise for a thinner product. After making an adjustment, allow the refrigeration system to cycle two or three times to accurately evaluate the viscosity. For proper operation, there must be a substantial amount of mix in the hopper. If the add mix light illuminates, refill the mix hopper as soon as possible. Place the mix hopper cover in position. Closing procedure. To disassemble this unit, the following items will be needed. Two cleaning pails, all the brushes provided with the freezer, cleaning solution, single service towels. Draining product from the freezing cylinder. Place the power switch in the off position as far ahead of cleaning time as possible to allow frozen product to soften for easier cleaning. Remove the hopper cover and take it to the sink for cleaning. Place a pail beneath the door spout. Place the power switch in the wash position and move the draw handle to the right. When product stops flowing from the door spout, move the draw handle to the left and place the power switch in the off position. Properly discard the mix. Always follow local health codes. Rinsing. Pour two gallons or 7.6 liters of cool, clean water into the mix hopper. With the brushes provided, scrub the mix hopper, the mix level probes, and the mix inlet hole. With a pail beneath the door spout, place the power switch in the wash position and move the draw handle to the right. Drain all the rinse water from the freezing cylinder. When the rinse water stops flowing from the door spout, Move the draw handle to the left and place the power switch in the off position. Repeat this procedure until the rinse water being drawn from the freezing cylinder is clear. Cleaning. Prepare an approved 100 ppm cleaning solution. Use warm water and follow the manufacturer's specifications. Pour the cleaning solution into the hopper and allow it to flow into the freezing cylinder. While the solution is flowing into the freezing cylinder, brush clean the mix hopper, the mix level probes, and the mix inlet hole. 
place the power switch in the wash position. This will agitate the cleaning solution in the freezing cylinder. Place an empty pail beneath the door spout. Move the draw handle to the right and draw off all the cleaning solution. When the solution stops flowing from the door spout, move the draw handle to the left and place the power switch in the off position. Disassembly. Be sure the power switch is in the off position. Failure to follow this instruction may result in personal injury. Remove the torque arm, the hand screws, the freezer door, the torque rotor, the beater assembly, the scraper blades, and the drive shaft from the freezing cylinder. Take these parts to the sink for cleaning. Remove the front drip tray and the splash shield. Remove the drip pan from the front panel. If the drip pan is filled with an excessive amount of mix, it is an indication the drive shaft seal should be replaced or properly lubricated. Brush cleaning. Prepare a sink with a cleaning solution. Use warm water and follow the manufacturer's specifications. A solution that is too strong can cause parts damage, while a solution that is too mild will not provide adequate cleaning. Make sure all of the brushes provided with the freezer are available for brush cleaning. Remove the O-ring and seal from the drive shaft. Remove the O-ring and the bearing from the torque rotor. Remove the draw valve, the ice buster, the front bearing, the gasket, and the prime plug from the freezer door. Remove all the O-rings. Thoroughly brush clean all the disassembled parts in the cleaning solution, making sure all lubricant and mix film is removed. Place all of the cleaned parts on a clean, dry surface to air dry. Replace the hopper cover and using a small amount of cleaning solution, Brush clean the rear shell bearing at the back of the freezing cylinder with the black bristle brush. Wipe clean all the exterior surfaces of the freezer. We at Taylor thank you for watching this video. <music>